In part one, I introduced you to the problem of creating a, a constant vacuum. I gave a small introduction to pressure sensors specifically for vacuum. I also introduced you to the relay, which is a switch that can be turned on and off by a 5 volt signal. And the switch is switching a larger um, AC voltage, like 110 or two, 220 volts um, AC. And I also introduced you to the objective of the of the um, of the project, where we have a motor, pump, and a tank, where we are drawing air out of the tank, and we have one hose going to a nozzle, which is actually being um, actuated by a solenoid to turn the uh, the vacuum on and off at the nozzle, and we're also controlling the the motor, uh, regulating the tank using a pressure sensor and switch. And the pressure switch, or the switching, is being done with the microcontroller, which is controlling a relay that is connected to the motor. This solenoid is connected to a valve. For this circuit, I'll be using two um, breadboards, because I have the, I'm gonna be using the um, ADC on this side, and I'd rather put the components pretty close to the ADC. And I'm gonna put the, the relay on this side. Let's first set up our ADC, which is taking our AVCC pin and the ground pin on this side. And we're gonna be connecting those two together. And since the pressure switch goes from uh, zero volts to 4.6 volts, we'll use a five volt reference. And that's just using the, the AVCC pin as the reference. Pin number 31 is our ground pin. So we'll take a jump. Take a hookup wire and put it to ground. And our number 30 pin is our AVCC pin, so we'll take that to the positive rail. So now we have the ground going to ground, AVCC going to the five volts, and we've um, taken a capacitor to filter any noise at that point. For the, the pressure sensor, we'll take the pressure sensor we, um, that I created on the little perf board on my little breakout. And I'm gonna put it as close to the, the, uh, the, the first pin of the ADC as possible. And I'll take the, um, the output, which is this number four pin here, and I'm going to wire it to the first pin of the ADC, which is pin zero. Now I'll take the, the number two pin, which is our five volts, and I'll take it to the plus pin, the plus rail. I'll turn it around so you can see it better. And this is plus here. And we'll take the the ground pin. Actually, no, this is the wrong pin. It needs to be shoved over one, because the number one pin isn't used. I'll take it to the number two pin. Okay, so that's the number two pin going to the plus side. And we'll take the ground, which is number three. Okay. Okay, so now I have pin number three going to ground, which is this point, part of the rail. With my LCD, I actually created a, a really convenient little uh, breakout here, which has the, the contrast um, trim pot or uh, trimmer uh, potentiometer um, actually on this board so I don't have to take up any space on the on the breadboard and I just took each of the pins and I um, I'm taking it out to some connectors some headers here I can just plug into the board I did a tutorial on how to make these so if you wanted to do something similar you can go ahead and just look at those tutorials these are really um, tough and rugged uh, connectors, so I can just plug them right into the breadboard and and use this as a prototyping device whenever I need it. And the other ones are, I just plug them in here just so I know the orientation that I need when I plug it into the breadboard. So I'll plug the LCD data lines into port B here. When I start programming, I'll, I'm actually gonna need to unplug this set of pins here uh, because it interferes with the SPI set of pins, which was mentioned in the 
LCD tutorials. So you can always refer back to that tutorial uh, to get more explanation about that. The power for my LCD has a a red stripe on one of the one of the wires, so I know that's plus. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the power rail here. And the three remaining wires are enable, read, write, and register select. I'm going to plug those in where they belong. And these are the same selected pins that I used in the tutorial. This is the port D, pin 7, and then pin 5 and 2. And this is what the breadboard will look like um, at this particular uh, point in, in for part 2. Part 3 we'll get more into the relay and, and adding a few more components on. But you should have it at this point right now and we're going to go ahead and start programming. Okay, I've loaded up the my main.c and I'm starting with some skeleton code, um, as always. I um, have the include io.h file, and we have the main function, and we have our never-ending loop. Let's go ahead, because we know we're going to be using the LCD, go ahead and include the LCD file. And we have to initialize the LCD. I think this is with the capital I. I'll also be using the interrupt for the ADC. Whenever it gets done with the conversion, it'll land in the the interrupt vector or the interrupt uh, routine um, that I'll be putting in. So we can include interrupts, avr interrupt.h, and we can add our interrupt service routine corresponding to the ADC vector and our code block. I'm going to start out with uh, something on the LCD uh, to show us what we're doing. So I'll just use the send a string to Mr. LCD with location. And the location will be 1, 1. And then the string that we would like to display, we can call it pressure. At first, we'll have the pressure just a number between 0 and 1023. Um, and later I will uh, adjust it so it will be in inches of mercury. To get the ADC clock between 50 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz, we need to set up 16, um, a prescaler of 16. To do this, we need to enable the ADPS2 bit. It's analog to digital prescaler 2. This is located under the, the ADC. Status, status and control register, and A. We're going to go ahead and OR this, and put a 1 in the ADPS2 register, or bit. And now we can set up our reference voltage, and that's under the ADMUX register. We're going to OR the REF S0 bit, and what that does is it enables the AVCC as a reference pin, which is the 5 volts. But it also tells us we need an external capacitor at the, the AREF pin, and I forgot to put that in, so we can do that now. The AREF pin is right next to the ground pin, so I'll just put the capacitor from the AREF to ground as per the data sheet. Oh, I'm one off. There. So we have our voltage reference set up now. Let's go ahead and put in the interrupt enable. That is under the ADC SRA register again. And it will be the ADIE, the interrupt enable pin or bit. We can go ahead and enable the, the ADC, ADEN for enable. And we can set up our SEI, the uh, global global interrupts. And now we can start the conversion. So we can go ahead to the S ADC SRA again. And AD <coughs> SC single con single conversion mode. Since it's done in a single conversion here, which is in the sort of initialization area, we'll need this once it's done a conversion, so we can start all over again. So we need it to start a conversion again when we're in there, when we're in the interrupt service routine. Now we can start capturing the 
the conversion results. I'm going to use um, use a variable of eight bits for the low part of the conversion, called the low ADC, and that's under the ADCL register. The analog to digital conversion low. And now we'll make the 10-bit result a 16-bit integer. We'll call that 10 bit result. And this is going to equal the ADCH. And we need to shift this eight spaces to the left. And then we're going to OR the low, the low ADC. So this is sort of tagged on to the end from the ADCH. And now we're ready to display that number on the LCD. Will you send an integer to the LCD? Mr. LCD. And this particular routine has the the uh, location built in, X and Y. So we got to figure out what the X is. Let's go to pressure and see how long this is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A space for 10 and 11. So on the 11th position and on the first line, we'll have the ADC result, which is the 10-bit result. I'll just copy it from there and paste it. And this will be four digits long. I'm going to go ahead and do a make to see if I have any errors. And I do. So let's see what is going on here. I probably misspelled this one. Send a string to Mr. LCD with location. Let me check that. Now it looks like I actually forgot the semicolon on the end of that line. Let's try a make again. It looks like all the errors are are gone. So it looks like it's okay to program. I'm going to go ahead and try to program it, see if I get um, an ADC number on the LCD. And then we can enable the, the pin um, on port D, uh, pin 0, to activate the relay. So I've programmed the microcontroller, and I have an unexpected result. It only shows me pressure. I know I didn't have any errors when I made the, um, or did a make all. So this is a runtime error. I'm experiencing a um, an error that happens only during runtime, not during the, the compilation of the program. So I need to go back to the program and see what happened. Um, at, at first thought, I would think that maybe the uh, call to the Mr. LCD uh, to to actually print the um, integer is not working, but I know that's probably not it because um, the I would have gotten a, a com compile error if it was a uh, sort of misspelling in that in that function name, and I know I did all those uh, the parameters correct. So let's take a look at the program and see if there's any syntactical errors that I may have overlooked while I was programming. Okay, I'm back at the program. And I was actually looking through this program uh, for quite a long time until I found the error. And I noticed the error is on this line. And I only included one less than um, symbol here for this shifting. I should have added another one. Um, and it's really easy to overlook this because you're sort of, your eyes are glazed over the entire program and you don't see these single um, digits missing or, or a very small part of the program um, missing a single character. So that's actually hard to find. So it's good to just really look line by line to really scan the program to see if there's any errors. You can also do um, process of elim elimination, uh, take certain things out, uh, put some, you know, put, put certain lines in. You can also go back to the newbie hack site and sort of cut and paste some um, code blocks or, or some lines and just overwrite the lines you have. So now that I've put this one, um, made the shift operator work, let's go ahead and do another make all and I'll program the chip and see if it works. Okay, so the microcontroller is programmed and it looks like we have a number here, which is good to see. So I'm going to apply some, um, some suction to the pressure pressure sensor and see if we get a number to change, this number to change. 
and it looks like it's it worked pretty well. So we can actually look at this number and we can determine um, what inches of mercury we can establish by just adding a, um, a simple formula to the to the result which would be a coefficient scaling down this number to a range that we we want from uh, zero inches of mercury to about 25 inches of mercury and then offsetting that um, that result so it would be placed in the region that we want so we will look at that um, in the next video on part in, in part three if you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.